Welcome to Nuremberg, Germany. If you're just joining me on this adventure, I'm currently on a Eurail trip, which started in Vienna and so far has taken me to Bratislava and Prague before I arrived here in Germany. Nuremberg is located in the southern part of Germany and is the second largest city in Bavaria after Munich. I'm excited to explore it with you. Good morning from an already very sunny <laughs> morning here in Nuremberg. I got here pretty late last night uh, and went straight to sleep. So today we are going to explore as much as we can. I've got about a day and a half in the city and I'm so excited to see the sights. There's so much history here. There's so much to see in the old town. Um, there's a castle uh, and there's also a lot of history with the Nazi party and uh, World War II like leading up to the buildup of the war. So we're gonna check all that out, learn about it and uh, eat some sausages too because there's some famous Nuremberg sausages and you know, we've got to try it all. So let's get this day started. I started the morning by taking a walk through the old town and getting lost amongst the different cobbled streets. I passed St. Lawrence Church and headed inside to have a look at this restored Gothic church. Then I crossed one of the many bridges over Pegnitz and found my way to Frauenkirche. This church also happens to be at the heart of the Hauptmarkt, the square where you find a wonderful local market and during the month of December, one of the largest and most famous Christmas markets in all of Europe. It also happens to be the oldest Christmas market in Germany. It was only November, so I was a little bit too early on my trip, but I still headed over to have something that would remind me of Christmas and is a must-have when you visit Nuremberg. Let's have a taste of this famous gingerbread, shall we? It looks like it has like a wafer on the bottom. I've never seen that before. It's some almonds baked in. It's so thick, it's so chewy. Almost like a brownie consistency. It's so cinnamony. Mmm. It's so chewy. That is so good. <laughs> Yum. While you're in Hapmark, be sure to head over to this fountain and find the little gold ring. Spin it three times around for good luck. After leaving the square, I took a walk through Hangman's Bridge and then headed over to Max Brücke, which is the oldest bridge in Nuremberg, and looks back over Wienstadl. This is the view that I saw when I searched for Nuremberg that convinced me to add this to the itinerary. It's so beautiful. And blue skies make it even better. From here, it's a short walk to the beautiful street called Weissgerbergasse. I couldn't avoid the hill any longer. It was time to climb up to the Nuremberg Castle. It's not quite as steep as some of the other castles I visited on this trip, but there are a few stairs and steep cobbled streets to contend with. On the way into the castle, you can have a walk through the gardens, which are so beautiful and completely free, but I really wanna see the inside of the castle, so let's go. When I arrived in Nuremberg, I got the Nuremberg card which is a city pass that costs 33 euros and is valid for 48 hours. It includes unlimited use of public transportation within the city 
as well as entry to pretty much everything that you could possibly want to see in Nuremberg, including entry to the castle. I'll link to it in the description below if you want to purchase it before you arrive in the city. Nuremberg Castle is made up of a group of fortified buildings which were used in the Middle Ages by German kings, who were also considered the Holy Roman Emperors for a period. After exploring the castle, I thought it was time to try Nuremberg's famous sausages. Nuremberger roast bratwurst are required by law to be between 7 and 9 centimeters long and weigh between 20 and 25 grams. They cannot have more than 35% fat content and the wood used to grill the roast bratwurst must be beech wood that has been aged for three years. You can either have them in a sandwich, in which case they put three in a bread roll, or they are served on pewter plates with sauerkraut. The flavor that comes from the open flame and the aged beech wood is absolutely delicious. After lunch, I was fueled up and ready to hop on the bus to the Documentation Center and Nazi Party Rally Ground. During my visit, much of the main museum was closed, but there was a small exhibit that was packed with information about Nuremberg's history with the Nazi party in the lead up to World War II. You can still walk around the rally grounds, and during the summer, the nearby park is a popular place for people to come and relax in the sunshine. I've taken the subway a few stops to the west. I'm going to go to the memorial of the Nuremberg trials. Uh, so we saw where the Nazi party got its start, and now we'll see where they met their end, the Nuremberg Trials. It's a very different look to this part of the city. Definitely worth walking around for a bit, too. I highly recommend giving yourself about an hour to an hour and a half for this museum. The ticket includes a very thorough audio guide in several languages, and walks you through every single different decision that was made in the build-up to the trials, as well as what was happening around Germany and the world during the trials. It's very fascinating and very factual, and you can finish by looking in the very courtroom where the trial took place. It's just about to get dark. It seems like the perfect time to go underground to a famous set of tunnels where they store something very delicious. Beneath the city of Nuremberg is a network of tunnels that are first mentioned in documents from the 1380s. The cellars were used to store and age beer, mostly the city's most famous and historical type of beer, red beer. You can now take a historical tour with audio guides in several languages and learn all about how these tunnels were used and how the city grew from homemade beers to a tavern culture and why there are so many tunnels now. You finish with a tasting of delicious red beer. I ended the evening at a local restaurant where I sampled another Nuremberg specialty, roasted pork shoulder with a potato dumpling filled with bacon. The next morning, I was up bright and early to explore more of this city. I strolled through Hanverkhof with its cute cafes and medieval architecture, then along the old city walls until I reached a museum that I was so excited to check out. The Germanisches National Museum, which is included in the Nuremberg card, is home to some really wonderful exhibits including the exhibit I was beelining it to. Here in this museum is housed the oldest still existing globe in the entire world. It was created in 1492, and the Americas are nowhere to be seen on it. Next to this globe is the second oldest globe in the world, made not long after, but suddenly, with a very large island in between Asia and Europe. I spent a little bit more time outside exploring some of the churches and squares around the city before going into one more museum, 
the new museum, which is the Nuremberg State Museum of Art and Design. The exhibits are interesting and thought-provoking and often changing, so you can revisit and see something completely different. I hope you enjoyed exploring Nuremberg with me. It's such a cool city, so easy to travel around. It has so much to see. So if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel with my pretzel. <laughs> and I will see you next time. Bye.